Okay, thanks very much. Um, so this is the last talk of the conference. Um, I'm going to talk to you about probabilistic programming. I'm going to talk to you about sports analytics. Um, I'm going to advise you to never ever use these things to bet um, in general. Um, and uh, I'm going to talk about a really cool library called PyMC3, which is the new port of uh, PyMC2, which is um, a probabilistic programming um, framework uh, entirely written in Python. Um, so who am I? Um, I work as a data scientist for a large telco in Luxembourg. Um, I've got a math background. I'm involved in too many things. Um, uh, I occasionally contribute to uh, open source uh, 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 projects. And uh, you can find me on Twitter. Right. So. I'm going to give you a three-year PhD in probabilistic programming in two seconds. Um, you basically use random variables instead of normal variables. That's it. Um, <laughs> so the, the really important thing is that this allows you to create a generative story um, rather than a black box uh, method. I'm going to compare this to classical machine learning in a second. Um, it's a different paradigm to frequentist statistics. Um, it forces you to be explicit about your subjective assumptions. I'm not getting involved in any troll wars about frequentism versus probabilistic, uh, or sorry, or Bayesian statistics. That's just an easy way to die. Um, right, so this is black box uh, machine learning. This is from uh, Olivia Grizel. Um, da data goes in, black box, predictions, right? That's it. Um, I know there's psychic learn people here. I hope I really didn't offend anyone. Um, Whereas with probabilistic programming, um, as Olivia pointed out as well, you've got data, you've got a black box inference engine, but you've got open box mo models. And you can look at my code, and you can see how the model is specified, and you can see where all the assumptions are. Right, so um, whenever I first encountered Bayesian statistics, um, like everything I've ever been encountered in statistics, I was terrified. Um, and put off it for about two years. We should probably do something about that, teaching-wise. Um, so most integrals can't be solved by exact form. Um, thankfully, there was a historical invention of Monte Carlo simulations, and there's been a lot of development in that. Um, and these uh, simulations are used to approximate your likelihood function. Of course, you're probably a bit like me, and this is what you're thinking right now. So some quick terminology. Posterior is proportional to your prior uh, times your likelihood. Your likelihood function is what you want to simulate. Your prior function is what you want to specify at the beginning. This is your subjective element of, of these uh, equations. And your posterior is a really cool thing that you want to get. That's your answer. Um, this here is from the Quintopian blog. And if any of you want to see really good examples of um, of how you use probabilistic programming. Thomas Vecchi works for Quantopian, writes often on their blog, does a lot of stuff like he does a Bayesian value at risk model, which is really cool. Um, and this is the way he talks about it, right? So you have data going in, you have your priors, which are your generating your, your mean and your variance, and you do your Bayesian stuff and you get your posteriors come out. So this is the bit that always gets me in trouble. Every talk I give, someone asks me this question. I don't know, right? Um, how do you pick your prior? It's an art. So you kind of get a sense of what these th things. As a scientist, it's a really bad way to say something. Like, you just kind of pluck it out of thin air. Um, but generally, you'll have some notion of, of a problem, right? Generally, you'll have some notion of what you know, certain behavior will go that from the literature or from your understanding. Um, Controversially, as you add more data, these things matter less and less. So your prior could be something like this. Any of these classical distributions, um, generally with things like sports scoring, you generally get a Poisson distribution and you use that as one of your priors. But there's other things. You can pick a uniform distribution. Um, to be honest, what you often do is you have an iterative metal method, which is you try a different collection of priors and you see which one works. And then you sort of justify that with the literature afterwards which is a really bad <laughs> scientific method as well. <laughs> um, right, right. Of course, when I first heard about probabilistic programming, I heard about Stan and bugs and all these specialized languages that people use. Um, thankfully, someone went ahead and did this in Python, right? So 
We have Pi MC3, which went beta a few months ago. I gave a tutorial on this stuff at Pi Data London, and they, they went beta at that point. It's based upon Theano. Um, I'm not going to go into too much detail about this, um, but Theano is a really interesting computational framework. Um, you've got things like automated, automatic differentiation. You've got GPU speed up. It's also used in uh, deep learning. Um, there's a really famous book in this world, which none of you know anything about, but it is a world, um, called Bayesian Methods for Hackers. And there's a current um, project to port this from PyMC2 to PyMC3, um, which I'm glad someone else has the balls to do. Um, and um, I've, I've submitted the code from this tutorial and stuff to this version. Um, you can look on my GitHub. Um, I have to give a shout out to Jean Salvatier. Thomas Vecchi and Chris Fonnesbeck, because they're the people who've done most of the work in this, in this library in general. Right, okay, so I'm a rugby fanatic. Um, uh, I wanted to do a model of the Six Nations last year. If any of you don't know what rugby is, it's just a game where people run into each other and collapse. <laughs> um, <laughs> so um, that's about it. Um, if you want, I wanted to build an understandable model to predict the winner, right? So, there were certain latent variables I wanted to get in my modeling framework, but I had no measurement for them whatsoever. I just had what was publicly available information. Unfortunately, I'm not allowed to put sensors on professional rugby players and get these kind of data that I really want. Um, so the key info in this model is that we want to infer the strength of each team. And we only have scoring data, which is noisy, hence Bayesian stats. So, um, there's a whole paper and stuff on this. It's really interesting. Most people seem to write papers until halfway through their PhD and then go to work for a gambling company. Um, so, and so they sort of drop out of the academic literature. Um, um, I used a hierarchical model. And if any of you come from a frequentist background, you'll know that's a fixed effect model. And I wanted home advantage to be stronger um, for, for, the, uh, for each team. Um, and I wanted this also to be particularly stronger for the stronger teams. So, so the strength of the teams was a really important thing in this. Um, from this, I was able to create a novel model based only on historical results and scoring intensity. But don't get too excited yet. I'm going to tell you actually what happened. Um, and I simulated the likelihood function using a Monte Carlo method. OK, so my data set is actually, I think, 12 lines. So forget big data, everybody. I do small data. Um, the model looks like this, and you can see it's, it's quite easy to understand. You've got a context manager here. You've got all your parameters. Some of them are probabilistic. Some of them aren't. Some of them are uh, distributed across the whole set, and some of them are team-specific. You can read my code. It's, if it's not well documented, send me a pull request, and I'll fix it for you, please. I promise. Um, and this one you can't see too much, but then there's a, a few other things. But at the end, the really important part is the likelihood function. And likelihood function is what we want to simulate. And then we, we've taken our data set of things like home points, and we take away, away points. And then you run the model. And they have a load of different samplers. I had some trouble with the first sampler I tried. So as I already said, I try something, fail, and then try something else, and then try to make myself look better afterwards. Um, and this works quite well. So then you get kind of results like this. And from this, you got a good understanding of your different parameters. Some of your parameters are your attacking parameters. Some of your parameters are your defensive parameters, and some, there's even other things in here, like this different strength of the team and how likely they are to do well at, um, at a certain uh, uh, competition, whether home advantage helps them a lot more than other ones. What's actually happened, right? The model incorrectly predicted that England would come out on top. Ireland actually won by a points difference of six points. Um, prediction's really difficult, especially about the future. <laughs> so, um, and uh, so I looked in the literature, there's like all these problems about over shrinkage, that if you have like too many outliers, you, you wrongly predict them and all these sort of things. So there's all sorts of interesting ways. So you could create a more complicated model, but I wasn't allowed. Um, <laughs> it's sort of taken away from the computer. Um, thanks to the open source community for helping me, because I originally wrote this in PyMC2. Then someone asked me, why didn't you write it in PyMC3? And then I did what I was told. And then I realized there are some subtle differences between the API. 
but um, the Pi MC3 one w works a lot faster, as you would expect. So lessons learned. Um, I can build an explainable model using Pi MC2 and Pi MC3. You can fork my stuff and play around with yourself. Maybe with a different sport, like hockey or something that's easier, I don't know. Um, but the other thing is that the generative stories are really interesting, and that's really the reason why I wanted to bring these things up, right? So we have all this talk about machine learning, that's cool. Let's do the real stuff like Bayesian statistics. Um, and let's use these things correctly in a, in a way to get a better understanding of the phenomena. Um, it's often said, and I often say this, is that the communication is the last mile problem of data science. And Pi MC3 is really cool. Please use it and please contribute. Um, you can't give a talk about these things without mentioning uh, the following three projects. There's Bayesian Methods for Hackers, done by my friend Cameron Davis and Pylon. Um, Jake uh, Vanderplas uh, does a lot of great uh, 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 material on this on his blog. He compares things like frequentism with Bayesian statistics. He explains it a lot better than I ever could. And you've got the Pi MC3 uh, project that has a lot of different examples there. And that's my email address. So that's the end of my talk. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, Peder. Are there any questions? Yes. That's a simple one. How much money did you lose? No comment. <laughs> <laughs> Any more questions? Yeah. yeah. See, now you're just asking me. And so the question was, why do I prefer Pi MC3 over Pi Stan? So one problem I had is that if you're using the Pi data stack, like uh, uh, NumPy and Pandas, to uh, to adjust your data at the start. There are some problems with loading to Pi Stan. Um, that might be because I'm crap. Um, that's a possibility. <laughs> but I find the workflow a lot easier whenever I was using it. Um, if you go into Jake Vanderplas's blog, he compares them. Um, I think he at the time said Pi Stan was better, but he hasn't reevaluated with Pi MC3. So perhaps I should write to him and ask him to do it again. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's always that problem, right? You create an API for another language, it's not the same as having it in your language itself, right? And it's, these things just reduce friction. So, um, uh, you know, and I've also had some trouble with bugs and stuff with PyStan and maybe not really understanding it. So that's the best answer I can give. Questions? Yeah. Um, so the question was, if I tried it with football, I would have a larger data set. The original model is based on Serie A. It's done by uh, some uh, researchers in Italy. Um, I don't know how much money they won or gained <laughs> from that. Yeah, but you're right. You know, like the larger data set probably would give you more things, and that's always the challenge. But I wanted to keep it as a self-contained example with a small data set as possible, just to be controversial. Thanks. Questions? No? Thank you so much. Thank you.